Welcome to the National Soccer Coaches Association of America Club Standards Project Winter Webinar Series. My name is David Newberry and I'm the coordinator of the NSCAA Club Standards Project, an initiative designed to raise the performance of coaches and players one club at a time. Since May 2012, we have had over 529 clubs join our project representing 352,000 players and 33,000 coaches. If you have already completed the free online preliminary club assessment, you can now receive an intermediate assessment that includes a review of current club performance, a comparison with best practices in player development, coaching and administration, and scores for the 20 most per common performance variables of successful clubs, all that for just $500. If for any reason you would like to do that, please contact me and I will then assign an NSCAA consultant starting the evaluation in 2013. Today I'm delighted to have my friend and colleague Tony DiCicco present today's topic which is coaching attacking concept to youth players. Tony is a national staff coach for the NSCAA. He's also the founder and president of Soccer Plus Camps and is the ideal individual to present today's topic. With over 30 years of successful business experience, and in just six years as an international coach, Tony won three world championships, including the World Cup and Olympics with the women's national team and the World Cup with the under-20s in 2008. He is the most successful international coach with a record of 103 wins, eight ties, and just eight losses. Tony has also been the WUSA, the Women's um, Professional League, the first coming, he was the commissioner of that league, and also became the head coach of the Boston Breakers when the WPS formed. Tony can often be seen as a TV analyst and commentator covering many international and professional games and now college games. He is a graduate from Springfield College and Central Connecticut State University and was an All-American and professional player as a goalkeeper. Tony lives in Wethersfield, Connecticut, is married and has four boys and welcome Tony to the presentation. Thank you, Dave, um, and uh, welcome, coaches. Uh, this is a little bit different type of coaching uh, uh, session that I give, so I'll try to be um, as detailed as possible. And the reason why I picked this topic is, you know, I've been coaching all levels. I coached uh, youth players and uh, collegiate level players, and certainly all ages and all levels at my camp program. And then, of course, professional international players. And I found that the players, and most of them have not, learned some of the basic attacking concepts when they were young. Uh, it's really hard to, to have them break old habits. So we're going to take um, a peek at some of the exercises I use. There's many, many exercises. These are just some. Um, but the first exercise, uh, is, which is a receiving uh, technical um, exercise, as you'll see here, is um, used for warm-up. And um, in this case, as you can see, I have, uh, you usually put at least two people at every disc. Um, you have two uh, balls traveling, in this case counterclockwise, players following their passes, and you're starting a passing sequence. The first thing that we that I listed on the concepts is to take looks. And we are very, very naive in this area. I was watching some of the, um, you know, the uh, English Premier League yesterday and watching players receiving balls. And the rule that I try to teach players is when you think you're going to receive a pass, take a look. You're looking over your shoulder. You're side on. You can see, the, see where defenders are coming from. You can see uh, your teammates attacking players making runs. So when you think you're going to receive a ball, take a look. When you know you're going to receive the next pass, take a quick look. And as the ball is traveling to you, if you can, take a look. So in this exercise here, um, all these players, of course, they're just stick figures that I've created, but all of them pretty much stand and present to the ball as my Boston Breakers professionals. And I had and, you know, five of our Olympic gold medalists playing for me in the Boston Breakers. They square up to the ball, like this, this stick figure right here, square up to the ball, 
they watch the ball all the way in um, and they lose range of play because they've never gotten side on and they've never taken looks. TYL, that's what I would yell training my uh, U-20 national team players, players like Alex Morgan and Sid LaRue or my Boston Breakers. And they knew what it meant, take your look. And until we teach our youngest players to take looks, we're inhibiting their ability to play uh, excellent attacking soccer. The next concept uh, is aggressive first touch. And we can do all kinds of things in these passing organizations. Even though this is just passing, firm passing, passing to the correct foot, receive across your body, we can also teach them to take aggressive first touch um, and you know we can move on from there to do combination play. These little passing organizations I think are critical to teaching technique and teaching some of the things that our youngest players need to learn at the entry levels of the game. Aggressive first touch, take looks, etc. We also need to teach our youngest players runs and we can spend the whole session on runs. There's all kinds of runs. There's um, bent runs, which I'll spend some time with now, open up runs, diagonal runs, um, reverse runs, check runs, and there's probably more than a few categories uh, in each. There's runs to support the ball, there's runs to get in advance of the ball, but we need to teach them runs. So in this little exercise here, um, a player receives the ball, you know, one of the central players, and I call this linear passing. And I really teach this as a lead-in to how to play one touch, but also effective runs. So this player right here plays the ball back to an end player. The end player doesn't play a, a double pass with this player, instead plays all the way up to the highest player. This player, as soon as they pass the ball, bend the run, and then come in here to receive it. The bend run is critical because they're marked. There's a player here marking them. When they play this ball and immediately bend the run, they drag that defensive player that's here away from the ball. They make that defensive player honor the run more than that back pass. So now when the ball is received here, this player lays it off, and now this player bends the run. And the bend run has to be very shaped. It can't be just a pirouette, as your players will do. Make sure they bend the run so that they can receive the ball on, uh, across either shoulder of the defender, across the defender's right shoulder or across the defender's left shoulder to get in behind, either way. But they have to bend the run to create that. After a while, the two outside players come into the center, and the two center players come into the outside. And you're going to be able to do all kinds of little variables. This is the basic piece, but you're going to be able to do all kinds of things. Now, where will they make mistakes here? Your two center players, like these two center players here, will end up square to each other. I'm not saying that square balls aren't good in some one-two scenarios, but basically what you want is a player receiving a ball here, laying it off at an angle, allowing for this player to play one touch forward. Laying it off so this player can play one touch forward. This is a pretty dynamic exercise. And you want to stretch them so they're sprinting in the center. Because the game of soccer needs to be played at speed. Their runs are good, their angles of receiving balls, laying balls off one touch, and playing that longer ball um, is all done now under um, pressure of time and speed of the game. And then, as I said, use your own imagination and add things in. 1v1 soccer. <clears throat> we just watched um, you know, Indiana win a national championship collegially and University of North Carolina win a national uh, champion, collegiate championship. And one of the things that both those teams had in different parts of the field, I thought the outside backs for Indiana, very good 1v1 players, and certainly the wingers and forwards for UNC and even Tacky Whitfield are very good 1v1 players. We need to nurture this. So this is a, a, a fun game, a simple game. In, in this uh, scenario, I'm just using small goals. If you have 
four big goals and goalkeepers, even better, put them in there. You might have to change the width. But this player right here is attacking either goal. Once they score or once the ball is dead, this player sprints out, this player recovers, and now this player attacks either goal. So it's, it's basically a flying 1v1 to two goals. And obviously, if this player attacks this goal, shoots and scores, this player is coming out at speed and is going hard probably to this goal. So, you know, there will be times when the defender is marking them and they have to be deceptive and sell that they're going to one goal to the other goal. Um, don't have too many players in each line. You know, three or four is good. And now you can do it 2v2 if you want. You can take the 3v3. Or sometimes what I do is the first one goes out 1v1. The second one goes out as a pair 2v2. The next one is go out as three, some 3v3 or 3v2, whatever is out there defensively. Flying one versus one. There's 100 games to teach one versus one attacking moves. But this is just one of them. This next game is something that I use for all aspects of the game. If, it was, if I had one exercise and 30 minutes to train a team, this is what I would use. And what this game is here, and I, you know, right now there's nine field players involved. So I might have another game over here with nine field players, but I'm just showing you this one side. It's, we've got three red defensive players. We've got three blue attacking players, and we have three black neutral players. The ball is played into the blue players, and they're trying to score. They play wide. This player is going to serve a ball in, a dangerous ball, uh, bent in, whatever, to try to score. When the red win the ball, they have to get it out to a black player, and then they go offense, and blue goes defense. So what I call this and all of us that have played some basketball in our lives, is half-court soccer. This is like half-court basketball. You're playing half-court basketball, you get a rebound, you can't just put it up, you got to take it past either the, the, the um, three-point line or the foul-shoot line, and now you go offensive and the other team goes defensive. Pretty much here. So what can we teach in this game? Well, 1v1 to earn shots. Certainly when balls are played wide, Okay, where do the runs come in? Well, if the ball is played wide to this player, this should be the near post runner. This player should bend out and maybe go to the back post, and this player here maybe bends and then attacks into the, into the um, slot. Now, that probably won't happen with your players. This player will, might already be on the front post, will stay on the front post, and they've got to learn to rotate. So it's a counterclockwise rotation when the ball comes out here. It's a clockwise rotation when the ball is with this uh, flank player. Uh, what else do they learn here? Well, if you play for three minutes, you're exhausted. So you know now you rotate a team in. One team's going to be a little bit tired. One team's coming in fresh. They've got to learn to deal with that. Um, sometimes I teach you can only score from combination play in here or flank play here. Because they'll just keep moving the ball around, but can they create create combination play in and around the penalty area? I'll tell you right now, unless you have an exceptional group, they can't. They won't. And I'm talking um, you know, professional players, international players have trouble seeing combination play in tight places in and around the penalty area. We need to put them in this environment, and I know it works. Because last year I worked with a, a U13 team and a U15 team, and they started to get it. The season before, I was working with my Boston Breakers players like Lauren Cheney and Annie LaPelvin and Ste uh, Stephanie uh, Cox and Rachel Bueller and Kelly O'Hara, and we were struggling with it. They also got it, and one of the excellent goals that I remember from coaching in that season was a little one-two in the penalty area that Kelly O'Hara scored on. So you put your players in this environment. They've got to be able to defend. They've got to be able to uh, finish, um, bend shots, because they might not beat that defender. There's not going to be a lot of space between defenders. It's great for the goalkeepers. And it's also uh, economic training, because it's physically demanding.
my favorite exercise. All right, this is another one of an exercise that I really like. And what this is is basically an 8v8 game. So I finish after the session, we finish playing 8v8. Okay, but in this session here, there's four blue players playing against four red players. And if you want to throw in a plus player that plays with the offensive team, that I've done a lot too. The attack in red is defending this goal down here. So this attacking red player, or let me use this attacking blue player, when they receive a ball, they can dribble in to the penalty area. They've gotten around the corner and now they can, you know, shoot. Not a great shooting angle, but they can cut balls back. They can drive them hard across the face of the goal, whatever they can to create goal scoring opportunities. So the, the attacking players at each end can bring the ball in. The players that are on the defensive side, like this red, red defensive player, I want them to flight balls into the penalty area, to try to get runs into the penalty area for flick headers. This will challenge the defenders, it'll challenge the goalkeepers, but it'll force the attacking players to be creative and also to look to pick up second balls. If you saw the corner kick that uh, Zavaretta scored yesterday, pick up the second ball in dangerous parts of the field um, and you can score goals from them. They've got to be able to read those. So this 4v4 game is not only a lot of fun because this field here is 38 yards long, 44 yards wide, which is the width of the penalty area, and then the players play in the channel. After playing for two, three, four minutes, the inside players go to the outside, the outside players come to the inside, and you're just keeping score. But one of the things I do in this, because I don't want to slow it down too much, is if a player takes a shot, it's deflected by the goalkeeper and turns into a corner kick. It just stays with the possession but starts with the other goalkeeper. They get the ball out and play quickly, and um, they're playing. I try to impress on the players that every time they get the ball, this player here gets the ball. He's at midfield. He's 18 yards from this goal. He's 18 yards from this goal. He's ready. He should be ready to shoot. This player gets the ball. Should be ready to shoot. So. Every player here receiving the ball has to look to either take a touch and shoot, pass to get a shot, uh, dribble to get a shot. Every, everything needs to have an offensive flair to it. So these are just five activities I use to impress upon the players I coach, whether they're you know, U10s or, you know, uh, Christine Lilly, when uh, she played her last professional season playing with the Boston Breakers, is attacking concepts. And I just want to go back all the way to the first page here. Take looks. I can't impress how, um, how important that is. And remember, when you're coaching your players, when you think you're going to receive a pass, take a look. When you know you're going to receive a pass, take a look. And often, if the ball is traveling over a little bit of distance, you can take a quick look as the ball is traveling to you. Be aggressive with your first touch. In this exercise here, uh, I have a sequence where this player receives the ball, takes a touch here, spins out, spins back out, and then plays the ball and follows their pass. So there's, because there's four balls going, it's not like people are waiting for the ball. So there's an aggressive touch, you spin away from pressure, you spin back in the other direction away from pressure, and then you pass the ball. And of course, you can do a lot of wall pass, quick little wall passes with tight triangles in here, all the way around the field as well. Um, the runs, bent runs, if I was to write another book, I'd probably um, title it Ben Runs Forever. Because the bent run is something we're not getting enough with. And um, we have to teach our players runs, the sophistication of runs. We have to nurture our 1v1 take on artists so they know when to take on, take on the, and have the courage and responsibility to take on. And for sure, all American players, boys, men, girls, women, we have to be better at combination play. One of the themes that I always say is, the aggressive defender is setting themselves up to be combined around. So when you try to pressurize a Brazilian player, an Argentinian player, or, or a Spanish player, 
they feel the pressure, but they also see the opportunity. I think right now, American players feel the pressure, and they try to pass responsibility instead of seeing the opportunity. Um, be creative in our, uh, in our games. Uh, and this is a theme that I always say. If you don't try it in practice, you'll never try it in the game. So when you have a chance to take a player 1v1 and throw a scissors or, or whatever it might be, if you don't try it in practice, you won't try it in the game. They need to watch high-level soccer and then emulate what they see. And we need to help them become more sophisticated. So let me get back here to the question and answer 